Four Legends of Rock collide with The Simpsons in our most horror-drenched issue yet. Brandon's Monster Morgue is dissecting the 10th issue of Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror. Bart is jamming on the front cover as we're introduced to a sort of Mount Rockmore with the heads of Gene Simmons, Alice Cooper, Rob Zombie, and Pat Boone, our guest storytellers this month. Rock and roll all night with our first story, Bart Simmons, God of Thunder, plotted and written by Gene Simmons and Chris Yambar. Bart is being bullied by Nelson. Finally having enough, he breathes fire at him and his cronies, burning them down to their skeletons. Left with an elongated tongue, Bart is sent home. Marge was afraid this would happen and reveals that Homer is not his real father. She recounts a night she and her friend saw Kiss perform. She spent the night with the lead singer and awakened to a note explaining that he was the God of Thunder and that Bart is part of an apocalyptic species. Marge gives Bart his inheritance, a guitar she hid in her hair. Strumming just once transforms Bart. He flies off, wrecking revenge on the school staff and his fellow students, planning to enslave humanity later. Homer has mixed reactions to finding out he's not Bart's biological father. Lisa proposes to Bart that he rethink his definition of greatness and power. True greatness comes from great deeds. The siblings share a laugh when outside, Kang, Kodos, and their entire race of aliens invade. They will enslave humanity. Not unless Bart has something to say about that. Bart lays down his plans, such as putting kids in charge, getting rid of boring TV programs, and every day will be Halloween. Kang and Kodos call off the invasion. Their plans cannot compare with the God of Thunders. Bart has saved the Earth. Time to party every day. Get ready to feed your Simpsonstein. It's The Legend of Batterface, plotted by Alice Cooper and written by Chris Yambar. Alice Cooper narrates of childhood times at Camp Krusty. He thought he would be an outcast, but he didn't count on the antics of one Homer Simpson. All the kids hated Homer. He was clumsy, stupid, and at night would sneak into the kitchen and eat all the donuts and donut mix, leaving nothing for the rest of them. Finally, they've had enough. One Friday night, Alice leads Homer to the docks. A raft full of donut boxes floats in the middle of the lake. Homer swims through the freezing water, only to learn he's been pranked. The boxes are empty. The kids kept the donuts for themselves. They taunt Homer, calling him Batterface. The trauma drove Homer mad. At the end of summer, Homer goes home. As long as he never hears the words Free Donut Day at Camp Krusty, he'll be fine. Flash forward to present day. Homer watches Krusty the Clown on TV with the kids. Krusty announces his Free Donut Day promotion, sending Homer off in excitement. Bart and Lisa realize every year at the time of Free Donut Day, somebody shows up dead. They recount all the previous deaths, each victim stuffed with donuts to their demise. Twelve murders in total. Although, comic book guy's death may have been accidental from eating too much. They're not sure. Homer spends the entire night in the bathroom, masking his face with hot donut batter and topping himself off with sprinkles. He emerges with his batter face. Marge, the kids, and everyone around town admires this sudden burst of artistic creativity from Homer. As Homer buys a carload of donuts, Alice Cooper, the 13th and final camper from that fateful night, continues his narration, expressing his regret for not stopping that cruel summer prank. Alice awaits his doughy fate in his dressing room. A knock at the door. It's Batterface. The psychotic stuffs Alice Cooper with donuts. Sprinkles are the last thing the rock star sees. Next, enter the House of a Thousand Donuts, plotted by Rob Zombie and scripted by Ty Templeton. The Simpsons are on a cross-country tour of diners. Driving late at night, they come upon Krusty's Museum of Monsters and Madmen. 
This place has everything Homer could want. Monsters, murder rides, evil clowns, and fried chicken, as he puts it. Krusty, barely keeping the business together, greets the family while a drunk Mr. Teeny lunges with a knife. Keep the alcohol away from the monkey. Homer does not get his chicken unless he survives the murder ride. Before the ride even starts, an ad for Dr. Satan's House of a Thousand Donuts excites him. The family is out of there. A hitchhiker takes the family to the donut museum. They have donuts from so many different eras and locations. A truly wondrous sight. Too bad we don't get to see it. Homer eats every single donut. The fuming curator has the family taken to Dr. Satan. Dr. Satan is the lard lad incarnate. He transplants the brains of Taurus into his donut zombie creations. Marge isn't scared. She knows Homer will eat his way to their freedom. By an unbelievable turn of events, Homer is actually full. All seems lost. Mr. Teeny barges in with a chainsaw and rips the evildoers to shreds. The family vacation is saved. It's morning, and Krusty drives by, offering them a ride. Things are getting better, until Krusty realizes Homer never paid for the murder ride. Are you buying a Scareway to Heaven? Plotted by Pat Boone and written by Bill Morrison. The kids are at church camp. It's lights out on the first night. Inside the boys' cabin, the Flanders children are shaking. Bart wants to conjure up some ghosts. He snuck in a Ouija board. Thinking he'll have some fun creeping out the other kids, Bart accidentally summons demons who possess his fellow bunkmates. The rest of the staff gets it too. Lucky for us, Pat Boone is there. He and Bart get ready. The church camp summons Satan himself to our realm, when Boone and Bart crash the party riding a motorcycle. With a quick exorcism… spell… prayer? Pat Boone rids the camp of all demonic activity and rides off into the night. The final story this month was a little thin, but I don't care. This issue is awesome. Filtering the Simpsons through the pens of rock stars? The stories are packed with Easter eggs, making this issue a blast for fans of these artists. Kiss lyrics are referenced in the dialogue of the first tale. Fans of Rob Zombie's film and animation work will be excited to see cameos by Karen Black and El Superbisto. I'm sure there are more subtle treats to find as well. Perhaps it's my personal bias towards Alice Cooper, but his story was my favorite. I love the flashback structure of the summer camp, playing with our knowledge of young Jason Voorhees drowning, just to fake us out with something as ridiculous as empty donut boxes. We got pranked along with Homer. The two-page spread of the nearly Baker's dozen of kills outdoes the body counts of most slasher flicks. Alice and his snake are obviously against Whacking Day, too. The four rockers are all worthy guests in the treehouse. Next month, we are visited by an artist-writer combo critical to the growth of horror comics. Oh, I hate this place. Yeah, it seems like our house, but everything's got a creepy Pat Boonish quality to it. <laughs>